Hi, it's Jen Healy with the Air X Yoga Swings, and we're going to work with hips and fascia today. So fascia is the connective tissue that runs along the surface of the body like a sheath below the skin and between the muscles. So this fascia can act as like a, a barrier to the muscles being able to move and breathe. It's almost like they get suffocated when the fascia gets too tight, almost like cemented. If you've ever had a scar from an injury, that's fascia that builds up to protect the body and help it heal. But then fascia can be limiting. So we're gonna work particularly with the legs moving up into the hips and start to release that fascia doing some myofascial work with the swing. This is one of the things that makes this swing really special. It is a cotton like or blend, super soft and stretchy. So it acts like a second skin and interfaces with that connective tissue in a way to open it up. Now we're gonna work not with the arms as much as the legs and the back and start to stretch and lengthen and open up that fascia. So we're gonna start out in our sumo squat, pressing the swing down nice and low walking it forward and out to 10 and two. I like to use these round mandala mats that help to define the space and create alignment. And then the forearm press, I call it the diamond arms, is helping to lift the chest as we let the hips sink back, lowering back. So we tuck the pelvis under so it can really drop as we lift the sternum up and this dynamic movement of lifting the upper body and dropping the lower body, this dynamic tension is what releases the spine and creates space for the vertebrae. So from our sumo, we're gonna go right into chillaxing, keeping our arms wrapped around, hugging the swing, grabbing for the right leg loop with both hands, go ahead and get that foot in there and slide it up to the back of the knee. Second side, holding on to the leg loop, both hands, letting yourself float back of the knee to begin. So this is our number one relaxation pose while hanging called chillaxin. My hands are interlaced and I'm gonna place them behind the back of the head, pressing the back of the head into the hands. Elbows flare out wide. This is gonna allow me to lift the chest as I keep my hips heavy. So our mantra is hips heavy, heart open, head relaxed. Okay, this is rearranging the posture and shifting the way that our body can reverse and counterbalance all of the sitting, the computer work, the driving, all of that compression on the spine starts to open up with this gentle rocking from side to side. And just let that go good. This is actually interfacing with the fascia that lives along the band of the waist, the love handles, the lumbar. So just this, what I call swagger, it's rocking from side to side will actually start to open that up very slowly, very subtle, but it's like water eroding rock. In time, it'll just smooth it out. So repetition is the key with the swing. I recommend staying in the poses for three to five minutes to get maximum effect so you're not really rushing through these, you're slowing it down. The more you relax, the deeper the benefits. Okay, so that is the key with the swing is to really drop in called engaged but relaxed. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just start out with a simple hip stretch, it's called a seated pigeon. I'm gonna get my right foot on top of my left. So we can start to warm up the muscles before we try to dig in there. So we're gonna do some self-massage, I call it yoga massage in the swing. So I'm holding on to the foot and the leg loop so I can help pull the knee towards the body and sink the hips, lifting the chest. Okay, so this is gonna be a deep stretch. Five deep breaths if you can. If you need to take a break, you can undulate the spine by inhale, opening it up, taking pressure off the underarms, and then exhale. Give the leg loops a hug towards you to deepen the stretch. Inhaling, open and expand. Let that feel good. Open the chest, keep the hips heavy the whole time. Exhale, undulating, rocking, hugging the leg loops towards you. Inhale again. This is called star, and then exhale, squeeze. This is called child's. Okay, release that foot. Let's use our momentum to go right in the second side. Ah, oh, really good. So sometimes I like to even sway here, so I'm gonna flex my feet back just to keep the knees safe, 
and I'm going to press my sit bones down, and then that bottom foot, my right foot, is just exploring in the space, like wagging a tail. And this just changes which parts of the hip and the glutes we're opening over here on the left side. It's really powerful. And then to deepen the stretch, I'm going to inhale, open the arms, and exhale, reach around for the foot and the leg loop, pulling that towards me, keeping the chest lifted, head directly over the body. Let's do a few undulations. Inhale, open, star, spread the heart open, exhale, squeeze, hug the leg loops towards you. Inhale, blossom for star, exhale, hug and squeeze for child's. Inhaling, open it up, and exhale, hug it in, really good. So stay there for as long as you like, at least five breaths to warm up the body. And then we're going to go back to the first side. I'm going to use my chillaxing arms, get the foot on top, and then I'm going to slide it up. So this is me checking out how tight is my IT band. Um, this is extended leg twist. So from here, if it's comfortable, look under your right armpit and then T the arms. Now maybe you can grab for the foot or the leg loop, wherever you can reach, always keeping your armor wrapped around the swing because that is your hook, that's your anchor point. And then deepen the stretch, deepen the twist, and we're just gonna release, go right into the other side. And going back and forth a couple times, warming it up, extend the left leg, add a twist. First, you can just look down underneath your arm, and then you can tee. And if you can tee and reach for something, I like to grab either the leg loop or the foot and really twist, really stretch it out. Bringing out the spine, letting that feel good. Beautiful, guys. Okay, release one more time. We're going to come back to center. Now we're ready to go get into the fascia a little bit more. That was our warm-up lap. The first thing I like to do is just check out how are my legs feeling. So I'm going to reach up on my leg loops. So I touch my knees and slide up my knees from there to the top of the leg loops. And then I'm going to bicep curl up with wide straddle, leading with my chest, and then exhale, squeeze a few more undulations. Inhale, lift, bicep curl. Exhale, lower. Just a little hint, if you bring your leg loops down so they're not super high, it's a little bit easier for this one so your legs don't have to come into full horizontal splits. Okay, so always bring, always adjust the equipment and bring it down to make it a little bit easier if your legs are feeling tight to begin. Okay, I have my leg loops lower than normal for today to just do a more beginner sequence. And if you bring them up higher, it's harder, <laughs> okay? So just kind of notice that we're working with the inner thighs, working with the psoas and the groin, and just working that all the way up the iliac crest to the lower back. And these are the lines that are super tight. So this is how we can help out the body. I'm gonna squeeze my legs together while floating. They're gonna slide up really slow. So this is the myofascial work. I'm gonna bend my knees, maybe bring the leg loops up even higher, and then I'm going to drop my hips, lift my knees, and let them slide back down. I'm gonna do a couple rounds with both legs together. So press the hips up, let the leg loops slide towards the groin, top of the legs, and then drop the hips, lift the knees. So you're really going as slow as you can and using your own body weight in order to do the massaging. So I'm gonna do one leg at a time now. I'm gonna come into a lunge and I'm just gonna drop my foot. So I'm dropping the left foot. I can touch the ground here, but I'm gonna try and float just so there's more body weight. And then I'm just gonna roll around to the other side. I'm really just playing. So explore in the space, right? Maybe extend, see how that feels. You can hit the inner thighs and then you can also work the outer line of the thighs where the IT band and the hamstring meets up. It's really intense, so go nice and slow and it's dependent on your clothing. Slippery, tight, stretchy pants will work better than let's say like um, sweatpants where it would get all bunched up. So make sure you have the right pants on for the job today. All right, so we're gonna do a few more rounds like this during one leg at a time. And I'd say stay here for five, 10 minutes. I'm gonna expedite the process so you're not just like hanging out waiting for me if you're ready to move on, but I really dig in here. And this is gonna to help to release um, kind of the stagnation in the legs, helps the lymph, it helps with cellulite, 
It helps with injury, especially in the groin. A lot of my clients come in with either a groin injury or where the hamstring attaches up to the sit bones. These are all parts that we're kind of working the connective tissue. We are releasing that buildup of tension that lives along the surface of the body that I'm calling the fascia. Okay, we could also work the calves in the same fashion, but we're gonna focus on the hips today. We can work the arms in the same fashion. So just do a couple rounds of that, and then we're gonna let our feet come down to the ground and we're gonna dig into the groin a little bit. <laughs> it's a little uncomfortable, but we're just gonna go for it, okay? So from here, we're just gonna do knee lifts. I'm still holding on to the top of the leg loops. I call it the nub where the fabric meets the webbing. You don't ever wanna hold on to the the metal, but keep your hands right on the top of the fabric. Okay, it's a little bit more comfortable. It's almost like the shape of the palm. And so I'm letting the leg loops, this is even when you get like a really deep groffing session, it's difficult to get into these creases of the body. So we're just letting the swing do the work. It's really easy. I'm actually getting a nice core activation when I lift my legs here as well. If I wanted to make this harder, I could do both leg lifts, but that would be more for the exercise component, and I'm doing more of the therapeutics today. So make this as easy or as difficult as you want by how high you lift your knees. Okay, if I was going to go into a more advanced version, I would release the swing and hold on to my handholds. I like a wrist wrap. Okay, I let the handholds sit on top of the wrist, and then I grab making sure my hands are tight. And now I actually can have more weight in the legs. Now, if the first version felt like enough, you're like, yeah, that's enough digging, then don't worry about it. Just keep your swing around your back. If you want a more advanced version, I like supporting the whole body weight with the hands and the leg loops high up. I call it high diver position when the leg loops are right where the leg inserts into the pelvis. Okay, so now we're gonna come back down. We're gonna do one more round of testing out our new legs. Pressing the swing down, make sure it's behind your back, and right behind the heart, leg loops slide to the knees again. Before I go into my final butterfly skydiver sequence, I'm going to traction the spine. Okay, so from my upper back all the way down to my hips, I'm going to hold on to the swing and lean back so it'll slide down nice and slow, and I'm gonna drop my hips. We're gonna do this for 10 rounds where I let it slide up really high, and I'm pressing my back into the swing to get that tractioning along the paraspinal muscles. I'm just letting that feel really good as I slide up and down, and this is gonna help to massage out all the tension that lives in the back body along the spine. So you're using your body weight, you're going nice and slow. You can kind of wiggle a little bit from side to side to dig into the, the lumbard and the QL. All that stickiness that lives along the waist. This is great for the lower back, but it also helps to release all that tension in mid and upper back. Okay, 10 rounds of Lifting the hips, leaning back, almost like we're going into bow, but we're gonna immediately drop the hips and press the back into the swing, nice and slow, to traction the swing up and down. Oh, so good, just feels amazing. I do this for as long as you like, and just notice that it's also closed dependent, so make sure you have a nice, tight, stretchy shirt that is smooth so the swing can slide up and down better. If it starts to eat the shirt, just kind of take a moment to adjust and come back in. So now we're reaching for the knees, last pose. We're gonna test it out and see how it feels. We can do two rounds of all of this if we need. Holding onto the top of the leg loop, bicep curl, open the legs wide. That feels a little bit better. Exhale, close for a floating child's pose. Inhale, open, bicep curl. Now as I'm leading with the heart, my head stays in line with the body the whole time. If you want to have a, a shortcut, look up. If you're looking down, your head is heavy and your pelvis is round, we wanna stay arched and open through the front of the spine. So just look up for a shortcut if you're not sure, but really lead with the heart and bring more awareness into the center of the chest 
So it's not just where your gaze goes, but it's actually where you're leading from, leading with the heart. It's so symbolic of how we can move in the world. Okay, so after a few undulations, we are going to stay here and balance. Okay, my hands came in front of the leg loops, and now I'm gonna rock my pelvis back and forth, making sure that it's even. The goal is not to come forward in, in, until it's too uncomfortable. The goal is to hang out in that sticky spot, in that space where it's like, oh yeah. And the leg loops are also digging into the back of the knee, so you can always spread this out if that's too uncomfortable. But I actually like it because it activates the kidney points, which also releases the lower back. Okay, so we're working some acupressure points at the same time. And once you feel really comfortable, you feel like the body has opened, we bend the elbows. Notice my thumbs are up by my shoulders, not my waist. I slide into the elbow creases, knees stay wide, feet together, and hang out. Now here, you can keep your gaze slightly forward or go ahead and let the weight of the head hang, and this will actually help to open up the chest and shoulders. So my feet are together, I could do a little play time where I'm lifting one foot and the other foot if I want to get a little bit more of that myofascial work and that tractioning in. Stay here if this is plenty. Let the hips spread, let the chest open, let the belly lengthen. Notice the lower back is happy in these poses and now you have a full sequence to open up both the hips and the legs. Let's sink the hips back, bring the feet down towards the earth, pull with your arms so Oh, you catch yourself back into a chillaxin pose, and that is going to be it for today. That is our hips and legs working the myofascial, the acupuncture points, and doing some yoga massage in the swing. I'm Jen Healy. Go ahead and check out my website, arielyogaplay.com. You can also go to arielyogarx.com to get more information about the Erex Therapeutics. We did more of the therapeutics today, but they both lead you to the same place. They're just two different modules. One's more for just the practice and the other one is more for the healing and therapeutics. Thank you so much. Namaste.